The following is a presentation of TFNN. The P Power Trading Hour with your host, David White. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-445-1044. Now, David White. Me, your humble, lovable, and squeezably soft host. The following takes place between 2 p.m. and 3 p.m. And what do we have going on today? Well, of course, uh, winding up for Facebook earnings tonight. Uh, let's see what else we have. Uh, up uh, a little less than three bucks, up well, one and a quarter percent. Uh, when we look at uh, what else? We got uh, Qualcomm out, which will give us a little read. It's uh, off 24 cents at uh, 58.60. So just a lot of hurry up and wait. We'll talk about earnings tonight uh, in the hour, and of course, their earnings tomorrow morning uh, at uh, 8.45 should see some movement in the uh, uh, S&P and the other indexes as we get uh, more comments uh, from the ECB. Uh, I, generally, it's about 8.45 for memory. I think that they make an announcement and then they have a little uh, get together soiree at about 8.45. It doesn't last very long. So by nine o'clock, you should have a good read on the futures. Of course, uh, then we get into Friday with GDP numbers at 8.30. And so far, uh, as I've said for uh, two weeks now, uh, I think we are coming up there. I thought we would be there by now, but uh, 24, uh, 28, uh, 40, 28, 50, kind of in that range. We're only about 10, 12 points away. Any good uh, news on probably a handful of stocks, and that will tell us a lot. So. Uh, what do we have? Anyway, uh, s and is up 11, Dow's uh, off 7, and the NASDAQ's up 53. Uh, kind of pushed down a little bit earlier in the day. A lot of people were wondering what was going to happen, and now uh, just, in fact, a lot of these stocks, just far too many shorts uh, for, you know, what's going to happen for the market, i.e., you don't get short for a stock, $50 stock that's going to go down a buck. But uh, it looks people are are getting desperate or maybe they're just so bearish that they're blinded by the risk reward. I can't say that stock won't go down. I can say that uh, there is a probability of a stock going up or down and you have to gauge that as a trader. Uh, when you start seething and foaming at the mouth like a rabid raccoon, uh, probably good things not going to happen to you in the stock market. Uh, and of course, uh, I'm kind of, I've got a position, but I not really wanting to jump on board with any new ones. We've got some fairly light volume days uh, going from about six to six and a half billion shares. Uh, last time we were up in this area, we came off with about 12. So fairly light volume, but there is no signal that says anything's any close to putting a high in. Right now, we've got uh, 3.6 billion shares. And again, that's probably on track for a 6.6 .6 billion share a day. So we're going to get up into those uh, areas that gap down at uh, 2845 to about 4055, something like that. Uh, and uh, we'll see on the S&P. But uh, no real clear signals. And I think a lot of people are trying to make something happen where there just isn't anything to happen. There may be you know, some areas that are showing some promise, but I'd say 90% of what I'm looking at is giving absolutely no clue for the things that I use, uh, other than the fact that we're just slowly drifting higher. We're not slowly drifting higher with volume or going lower with volume on down days. We're just slowly drifting higher on light volume. And, uh, you know, most of these options are showing a fairly narrow range. In fact, very narrow uh, compared to previous uh, 
uh, times. No one's looking for a lot of downside and no one looking for a lot of upside uh, in the next couple of days on the, what I've been looking at in earnings. You can give me a call at 877-927-6648. What else do we have here? Uh, let's do a little bit of history, and then we'll get in. We already got a question in the den. We've got some questions in emails, so we'll go through those, too, and then we'll start looking at earnings from this evening and uh, tomorrow morning. And it's all just a little bit of history repeating. It is history repeating, or at least it rhymes. On this day in 19, or excuse me, 1874, Woodward and Evans Light filed a patent for artificial light by means of electricity. This is basically a small arc lamp that was way so bright that uh, no one could really use it. It would be another uh, six, uh, almost seven years before Edison decided to patent his bulb. There were some 2,000 patents for light bulbs before anybody got going. Uh, and actually made any money in this business. In 1802, Humphrey Davy uh, in England uh, invented his. And again, this was another uh, arc lamp that basically blinded everybody that was anywhere close to it. Not, not suitable for using indoors for light. Uh, some people had tried a variety of other things, including uh, vacuums to keep bulbs running a little bit longer, but never really got that far. Edison bought up a lot of patents to keep people out of his hair, and probably one of the biggest one was another manufacturer of light bulbs in uh, England. He, uh, Edison, got enough investors together to buy him out. The guy actually had a patent, I think, on the exact same day that uh, Edison did for using uh, titanium and uh, magnesium and other kinds of metal wires in a vacuum, uh, but uh, it would be another yeah seven years before Edison got his patent or filed for his patent for his light bulb, but uh, already on these days, they started uh, working to uh, manipulate the market. A lot of people don't really know what Edison was about. Yes, did he make some good discoveries uh, and uh, inventions? A lot of it were, uh, was other people. Um, I kind of think of uh, Edison, think about Musk these days. Uh, I guess maybe if Edison would have had Twitter, things would have been different. I think it makes everybody different these days anyway. Before you had to get everybody to show up to a theater. Now you just go into Twitter, and if you're half well-known, you say something idiotic, and you get a bunch of people uh, to go, brew ha, 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 ha. And it uh, echoes and gets even bigger and bigger. But, uh, yeah, that's about it. Anyway, we'll be back. Uh, we'll talk about a few questions about, uh, yeah, Steve Jobs actually did say that he loved a lot of the stuff that Edison did. He knew uh, maybe the first uh, guy about how to manipulate the press as well as Edison did. Steve Jobs worked on it. In fact, uh, Steve Jobs spent a lot of time figuring out how the Nazis manipulated the press. So, we'll be back after this. FNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that 
many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com. Tiger TV is an exciting way to experience TFNN programming, see high-definition video, giving you crystal clear charts, as well as seeing some of the faces of TFNN's highly acclaimed financial experts with crisp, full-fidelity sound. Catch Tom O'Brien, John Logan, Steve Rhodes, Basil Chapman, Larry Pesavento, Think or Swim, David White, Eddie Hecht, and Daryl Martin in crystal clear, high-definition audio and video. Tiger TV, exclusively at TFNN.com. Larry Pesavento has just started his brand new service, Fibonacci 24-7, and he's already delivering content to his subscribers on a daily basis when the market's opened and even on weekends. Each Monday, you'll receive Larry's written report that provides detailed commentary and a summary on the charts and videos that Larry sends out. And throughout the week, when warranted, Larry will send out via charts or videos or both the key markets that he is watching during the day. This will be up-to-the-date active trading information that will Will help you in your daily trading. In Larry's first week alone, he sent out 25 charts, six videos, and a full report to his subscribers in just one week. If you're a technical trader that uses patterns and retracements to trade, then Larry's service Fibonacci 24-7 is something that you must try. Right now, new subscribers can get a full 30-day money-back guarantee. With nothing to risk, sign up now to Larry Pesavento's Fibonacci 24-7 by visiting the front page of TFNN.com under Trading Newsletters. Many of our new listeners have heard about The Tiger's Den. The Tiger's Den is a lively community where professional traders and investors can meet, exchange ideas and information in a comfortable, moderated atmosphere. Hear all of the TFNN shows, plus see all of the charts as they happen live and have access to archives of all of those charts. You can test drive The Tiger's Den absolutely free for 30 days and greatly enrich your knowledge of these markets and how to make your money work for you. Details on The Tiger's Den are on the front page of TFNN.com. Dave takes your phone calls now. now. Toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-445-1044. And we're up uh, 12 points. Had a question in the den, and that is uh, about what's going on with uh, the uh, gene editing stocks. Um, there is a technique called CRISPR-Cas9 uh, that allows you to go in and edit uh, genes. We talked about it with Tom O'Brien um, in the 3.30 Friday hour a few times. Um, but there have been some articles that the problem is we don't that let me put it this way that show that there is the possibility that it could cause cancer when you do edit these genes uh, using this method. The problem is that is true, but a lot of people have already moved on to other ways. Um, to do this, and it, it takes a little explaining, but I'll try to give you the Reader's Digest version of this. Uh, the uh, Cas9 was find, found in a mosquito, uh, and they could see that the DNA could be repaired in a mosquito using this uh, kind of little machine inside the cells. Uh, so they decided to try using it for other cells, other than mosquito cells, found out it worked. They've used it on plants and animals and humans, and it's all worked fairly well so far, including, uh, or at least the first use of this, which is uh, uh, blindness in, in uh, adult uh, humans, uh, caused by a problem within, I think it's within the first three months of a, a baby's life, they can get this thing. It's very rare. I think it's like one in 100,000. So there are not a lot of people that have it. Anyway, it's shown uh, use, in, and people that have been blind all their life are starting to see again. So there was a lot of it, uh, instant praise. The downside is that there are other ways uh, besides this uh, uh, way of uh, doing it with Cas9 
Um, now that they know what they're looking for, they found all kinds of other ones like CAS 13 and other ones, and they're basically finding in, in various animals and viruses these, uh, uh, the ability actually to edit genes. And it's not just one, CRISPR is not one thing. It is a technology. And so a lot of people actually saying, well, this is the end of that. Well, first, we don't know that it's true. They're saying it's a possibility. Second, there are a lot of different ways to skin a cat now that they know how this stuff works. I suspect what everybody's figuring out uh, is something that I put in the Tech Insider, and that is that this is a great technology, but it's not coming out next week. And the stocks got way ahead of themselves thinking this was a fait accompli when this is not going to be any different than any other kind of of drug, but you shouldn't think about it as a drug. You should think about it as a technology. It is not some kind of pill you take that uh, that alters uh, your body chemistry. It is literally going in and changing the software that controls the cells and doing that correctly without then getting it to the cells that are, are needed. Let's say that you have a problem with your liver. Well, you don't want it. Uh, you don't want those cells editing DNA elsewhere. You want to just uh, try and get it to the liver itself, or the pancreas, or whatever uh, organ or uh, thing you're trying to fix uh, in humans and or in animals too, or even in plants to make better plants, uh, genetically modified plants. Uh, so it is. Uh, it is something, uh, but. Uh, and I thought that they were kind of way over the tips of their skis. We're probably really talking about another two years before this kind of technology comes out uh, of uh, the oven. It may be even sooner, maybe a year. But uh, the next real test is going to be late this fall uh, with uh, actual human trials. Uh, a couple of people came out with these papers and... Now the uh, uh, FDA is kind of making sure that everything is, the I's are t uh, crossed and the T's are dotted, or the T's are crossed and the I's are dotted. Maybe that's why they didn't get the, uh, get the stuff through. But anyway, um, FDA is just saying, hey, let's take a break. There may be something to this. We don't think that there's a whole lot, but it's going to take everybody to simmer down a little bit and know that this is kind of like the first days of a, transistor computer. Yeah, we can see down the line, is there anything that blocks this stuff from working? There's no. Will there be gotchas out there like uh, how do we make so many transistors and put them closer? The, the technology will slowly and inevitably evolve over time, but it's not a drug. It is a technology, and I would say it's a technology that you could say that is very close to computers, and that is that the ability for it to get better over time probably is uh, the same kind of gr uh, graph or curve uh, as Moore's Law. I think we're going to continually see this stuff get better. We're going to get better tools that actually come from computers uh, that go back and look at this stuff. Uh, machine learning is going to probably find out better ways uh, to target. Uh, these uh, dr uh, these uh, delivery vehicles directly into the cells, um, but uh, that's I mean there's a lot of stuff going on out there. In fact, that is one of the big things, and that is how do you get all these little uh, machines to edit the DNA inside a cell? Right now they're using viruses. There may be other ways of getting uh, this kind of these kind of micro machines into these cells. So there's just a lot to it. Hopefully, um, there's a there is gonna be uh, the biggest thing. I think it's probably the biggest thing that we'll see in the next 30 years. The question is just are you when are you gonna be right in getting on the wave for it, and who's gonna be the people that do it? Um, there's also technologies already and companies that have been doing this for 30 years using other techniques, those techniques may also play out. So a lot of stuff going on out there. You can give me a call at 877-927-6648.
And of course, you can email me at path at pfnn.com, and you can always put a uh, message in the den. Uh, one of the things I did want to bring up is uh, a article that I've seen flying around. A lot of times, uh, you can just say, okay, this isn't worth it. But it, this is one of the ones that doesn't make any sense, and no one's willing to tell anybody how they actually did it. So I'm basically saying and calling uh, bovine excrement on this story until somebody actually does say something, because either the titles of this article are wrong or uh, it's a lie. And basically, they say hackers reach U.S. Uh, utility control rooms. These control rooms are supposed to be what are called air gap. And uh, air gap computers mean that they're, it is not hooked to any other network. It doesn't have a Wi-Fi uh, connection. And every kind of uh, disk or USB drive that gets taken in there gets scanned before it's taken in there for, for problems. So we'll talk about this a little when we come back. This one's bugged me a little bit, mostly because everybody's so interested in a political slant. They're not looking to see whether the story's right. The Path of Least Resistance, David White's daily market letter, gives you trade recommendations based on David's proprietary power law vector indicator that put the odds of success overwhelmingly in your favor. He'll give you the entry price, price target, and stop price for each stock and option trade. David combines his years of trading experience along with his background in technology and computing to offer his subscribers his take on the markets on a daily basis. Every trading day by 9.30, David publishes his morning issue of the Path of Least Resistance along with updates sent out throughout the week whenever there is new, actionable trading information. All new subscribers receive a 30-day, no-questions-asked money-back guarantee. To sign up for David White's daily trading newsletter right now, visit the front page of TFNN.com and you'll find the Path of Least Resistance under Trading Newsletters. Biotech is booming, but for how long? Whether you think the biotech bull has room to run or has run its course, trade LABU or LABD, Direction's daily S&P Biotech three times bull and bear ETFs. Visit directioninvestments.com slash biotech today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the Direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact Direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors, such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. Has the current market volatility continued to stop you out of trades when the market spikes against you? Now is the perfect time to open up an account with Nadex. Nadex, the North American Derivatives Exchange, is a brand new, completely regulated Chicago-based exchange, and unlike most other exchanges, Nadex allows you to trade directly through them with direct market access when using their completely free trading platform, which also features real-time charts and full customization capability. One of the advantages of trading with Nadex in volatile markets is that your risk is always capped and you have the ability of keeping your trades open even when the market spikes against you. Nadex is completely completely brand new with a line of unique trading products that are unavailable anywhere else. See how it works at nadex.com. That's N-A-D-E-X.com. Or click on the Nadex banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Futures and options trading involves risk and may not be appropriate for all investors. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. And we're back. Now, what did I do with this? I just had it in front of me. 
Yeah, hang on a sec. Oh, here it is. Wait, what's Bitcoin? It's a new online currency that's been developed. Uh, it's just like actual money, except you can't see it, hold it, or spend it on anything. <laughs> and with that being said, we're going to go to Tom in Austin. How are you doing today, Tom? Hello? Hello? Hello, Tom? Okay, we'll have the engineer try to get him on an actual uh, phone line that doesn't stink and get back to it. Now, I don't know what his question was. It was about the Bitcoin trust, but we can't understand him. Let me know when you got him back uh, with some kind of signal that we can work with. Um, anyway, after the bell tonight, we're going to be looking at Facebook. Like I said, uh, looking at earnings on a lot of these. Uh, there are a lot. I think a lot of people are really uh, looking for some big moves. Um, don't know. Maybe Facebook is going to have a bigger move than other ones. Okay. He says he's back. Okay. This is uh, uh, Tom from Austin. How you doing, Tom? I'm good. How are you doing, David? Pretty good. So what are you talking about on, uh, it looks like the Bitcoin invest, Investment Trust. What is your question on that? Okay. His telephone connection or cell phone sucks, whatever it is. So we'll uh, hopefully he calls us back on a landline, Mr. Producer. So what else do we have going on here? We'll go back to Facebook. Okay. So you're up higher today on this. It's up uh, 20 million shares to uh, 218,000 shares. And, uh, you know, you're up at this level. Uh, maybe you're a little higher, but, man, this thing is, at least the options when I looked at them last night, basically plus or minus 5%, which isn't a whole lot for Facebook. Uh, most of the time they're up at about 10%. So no one's really looking for a whole lot. Maybe 230 on the high side and 210 on the low side. That would still be a fairly decent move and it'll move the markets, but that isn't. Okay. Now, if he isn't sounding real good, Mr. Producer. Oh, Tom, Tom are you there? I'm there. Yeah, I'm okay. here, sure. Okay. So you were talking about the... Uh, uh, Bitcoin, what's your question on this Bitcoin trust? Well, I had, I had a couple of questions. One was Bitcoin by itself. But, but I, I have to be honest, a couple of years ago when, when, when Bitcoin was brought up and cryptocurrencies and blockchain was brought up, I can't say that I really understood it then. And it's still somewhat of a fascination now, but it seems to be getting uh, uh, more of a substantial... Or substantially accepted type of technology, and I just wanted your opinion about that and, and Bitcoin as, as a subset of that. Well, I would first say that there's a book that any investor should read. It's called A Short uh, History of Financial Euphoria from John K uh, Kenneth Galbraith, and it goes through every level of financial uh, uh, dementia since uh, the 1600s, uh, from the tulip days to other things. And almost every one of these uh, episodes has the exact same thing in common. Uh, and basically, Bitcoin pretty much checks every box on that. So I've stayed away from it. Uh, the problem is that most of these things that are flaky like this can run for an incredibly long time. There's uh, an old saying from George Soros that what you uh, that uh, you want to get on before the fraud's been detected, and you want to get off before it shows back up, before everybody knows about it. Uh, let's see, I'm trying to remember the quote. Uh, every uh, episode of financial dementia uh, is one lie and deceit after another. You want to get on before uh, why everybody's. Uh, uh, getting into it and get off before it's discovered. Something like that from George Soros. Uh, but yeah. this, is, this isn't any different. It's going to be around for a while. Eventually, it'll lose its fad. Maybe a better one will come along. 
The question is, what makes a currency? And in this case, the one thing that generally makes a currency is somebody that backs it. It's basically backed by the faith of just the people uh, that are in it. There is no government that's going to stand in the way uh, or actually help anybody that's in it. We talk a, a lot and or hear a lot in the news about how uh, currencies are manipulated. Um, and again, how, my, how many millions of dollars has been already stolen in Bitcoin because either people lose their uh, little USB drives that have the data on it or the entire uh, exchanges just literally get all their money stolen instantly. All right. Uh, and so, and two, another thing, of course, I brought it up on Friday with Tom's show is that this, the idea was that this currency was kind of anonymous. And now we know from the government, they can track every single transaction and where it goes and who it goes to. So it's not anonymous anymore. I'm trying to figure out what the giant attraction to it is. And no one has been able to voice that to me. Doesn't mean that this thing doesn't go to ten billion dollars, and just like the, uh, like the, uh, uh, the, tulip bulbs. the, the Dutch, uh, one tulip yeah. at one time would buy you an entire house. Maybe that'll happen with this too, but you just never know. I'm I I tend to make sure that I don't get sucked into these things, and the best way for me to do that is just not get involved. If you get involved, then you start becoming a believer. And then it's very hard to do the right thing, which is get out before it's all over. And right. you, know, you, you can look back to gold, which is actually something to those right. folks that would never sell it in the 80s. And they saw it you know, go all the way up and then go all the way down. Um, but that, in fact, I was uh, talking to uh, uh, one of our new guests uh, on Tom's show yesterday, and I asked him, do you have to be a believer to be in the stock, I mean, to be in Bitcoin. And he, you don't really have to. And I mean, if you're going to be it in the next, trade it for the next five or 10 minutes. But man, I don't know if I'd even been be in this thing overnight. But a lot of other people have much higher risk tolerances than me. I just, I don't know how it trades. There's not enough news about it. I mean, I know on Boeing, if there's a news article that comes out, kind of how it's going to trade on that news article. Right. But there isn't really that kind of broadband news that pushes the stock around, I mean, the Bitcoin around. So that is another problem for me. So how does it trade when there isn't some kind of uh, way of uh, everybody having the same kind of news at the same time? But uh, you want to hang on the talk yeah. Folks, Tom O'Brien here. If you'd like to get my daily newsletter, Market Insights, then now is a great time to sign up for a 30-day free trial. Every morning by 9.30, I send out my morning letter to subscribers with market commentary on a variety of markets, currencies, and commodities to keep investors up to date on the day's trading action. Included in Market Insights are specific buy and sell recommendations for stocks, ETFs, and even options, with stops and price targets included for every trade in my newsletter. If you'd like to try my newsletter risk-free for 30 days, then head over to the front page of TFNN and you'll find Market Insights under Trading Newsletters. I use my years of trading experience to bisect and dissect the market every morning and give my subscribers the most important information they need to know for the day ahead. I even issue afternoon updates for my subscribers whenever warranted with important market action. I'm always scouring the market for the next great trading opportunity. Sign up for your 30-day free trial to my daily newsletter, Market Insights, today by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. Wow! Go get them, folks! 
Today, it's hard to tell if the economy is coming or going. Regardless, I want my money going in the direction I choose. If that's your stance as well, then you want to know how EverBank can help keep your money thriving just the way you want. Is growing your money a priority? EverBank is committed to a yield pledge promise to pay high yields on your checking, money market, and CD balances. Looking to diversify? EverBank ingeniously developed accessible ways to spread your money around the world into foreign currencies and even non-FDIC insured metals. And when it comes to your wealth, they bring a highly experienced and global perspective to help you manage it. EverBank's financial philosophy flies in the face of the status quo. They believe your money's performance should not be determined by today's economic circumstances, but by the drive to rise above them and create opportunities that favor your objectives. If that excites you like it does me, call 1-855-750-4051 to find out what they can do for you. That's 1-855-750-4051. Call them today. EverBank bank is a member FDIC and equal housing lender. The Taz Profile Scanner Plus, developed by John Logan and his team, is a standalone piece of software that can change the way you trade. Let the Taz Profile Scanner work for you by scanning over 5,000 financial instruments such as stocks, ETFs, commodities, futures, and Forex. Right now, you can get a 30-day free trial to the Taz Profile Scanner Plus right at TFNN.com. And when you sign up, you gain instant access to John Logan. Logan's most recent webinar, How Price, Volume, and Time Make Market Profiles So Unique. This hour-long webinar with John Logan will walk you through the most powerful features of the scanner and how you can use it to become a more successful and profitable trader. You pay absolutely nothing for 30 days while you try out this software risk-free. For more information on the Taz Profile Scanner and to get your 30-day free trial today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV for the latest market information. And, of course, we had Boeing come out this morning. Let's take a quick look at that. Yeah, and it's down a little bit. Uh, earnings were good. Uh, forecast is uh, up for the next year. The downside, the reason this got down to 345.56 this morning, was uh, a one-time charge for their uh, uh, to they get them back into the ball game on the uh, uh, air tankers for the military. And it was fairly decent, but it is a one-time only, and they're going to make all that back and more over the next year. At least they're saying that. And, of course, eh, you know, we're back into this trading range that's been in here for a while. Um, volume's a little good, but uh, it's not the end of the world. Uh, ta -ta -ta. And uh, let's take a look at uh, FCX. I wanted to take a look at that one real quick and see how it did. Um, FCX, uh, did I get this right? Get a little bit better. Uh, testing its previous low, went below the low. It's closing back into the trading range. Uh, but uh, you wanted less than 15 million shares. You got 25.8 uh, million shares so far today. So you're going to have a big volume day. But closing back into the trading range, energy was a little bit more on the way down off this July 10th high. So I wouldn't uh, be buying this until it consolidates out for a while. Might be looking at some of the other stocks in this sector also. Uh, to, to, what else did we want to look at? GLW gives us a little view into Apple and what they may be doing. And here's where I think everybody should be looking at uh, the upside in everything from Skyworks to Qualcomm uh, to Avago in the short term. I'm not think Avago may be one of the weaker uh, house of cards. Uh, but uh, Corning, huge earnings. Uh, a lot of people short uh, in the last uh, few days going up into earnings. We're back into this gap down that happened on the 30th of January. That was 17 million shares. You got 14. So you're going to get into this thing with volume. So Corning and their Gorilla Glass is telling you something, and that is that uh, 
as far as smartphones go, it's not as bad as we've heard from a lot of folks. Uh, no real uh, participation so far in Skyworks. Uh, and not a lot of participate. Well, we actually do have a fairly decent move in Avago, but this thing's just coming back in to this huge gap down on the 12th of uh, July with 44, eh, almost 44 million shares, uh, up back into it with 6.5 million shares. So again, you've got some weakness looking out here, but um, Gorilla Glass doing fairly well for coring. I don't know what else you can say about it other than that, but it's uh, pretty good. Now, as soon as we get earnings, of course, the next thing we do is go right to uh, looking at uh, the next round. Of course, Facebook after the bell, uh, AMD also. AMD was selling off earlier today. This comes out at uh, 4.15. Um, you've got a fairly decent low volume test of the previous high, or at least pretty close to that high. Uh, we had the June 18th high of $17.34 on 103 million shares, got into it with 65 million shares uh, on July 16th, and it's been kind of rolling back over. Uh, there's more than a little that says that AMD is probably slowing down a little, not a whole lot. Uh, but uh, I would not be surprised to see this back down into the 14s after earnings tonight. I wouldn't be putting money on it, but uh, to me, that is more than likely uh, in that uh, uh, 14, and what are we yeah, six, a little over 16 now. So it's not that big of a move, but uh, certainly the uh, cryptocurrency business has slowed down for them, which they kind of own. At the same time, uh, they don't have any boards that come anywhere close to the NVIDIA boards and uh, the video graphics and games people kind of leaving those guys in the dust. Uh, let's take a quick look at NVIDIA. Just going sideways back to the 9th of July. So not a lot to read into this one either. Energy almost on everything has been light since these uh, recent lows. In case of NVIDIA, it's the July 2nd low. Uh, to, 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 what else do we have? Uh, line, Las Vegas Sands, LVS. It's going to be a smorgasbord tonight for uh, Tom O'Brien in the 4 o'clock hour because we've got a lot going on out here. Uh, Las Vegas Sands looks like a big ABC on the way down. Uh, you keep, got down on 9 million shares on the 2nd of July, uh, and you're back up into it yesterday with 4 million shares. Today, we've got about 2.2 million shares. Uh, if this is an ABC on the way down, take a look and see what we've got. Uh, that would take you to $64.72 on a one-to-one. -one. Uh, there may be even a little bit more. There's a couple of gaps down at the one to 382. Uh, I don't see a lot in this sector that makes me think these guys are going to blow out earnings, but uh, this has been one sector I've been... I haven't bet on, but I've certainly been wrong on. It seems like whichever direction you think, this thing goes the different way. So I just try to avoid them now, at least at earnings. Uh, Mattel, uh, now Hasbro looked fairly interesting on earnings. I think that was on Monday. Let's take a quick look at that one. Uh, and gapped up very significantly. It's just kind of gone sideways here. Um, Mattel is the weak uh, sister on this one, but uh, they may also have a surprise. Huge short interest in Mattel last time I looked. Uh, in the chip sector, also, we have Xilinx. And I haven't seen anybody nosing around their door, but I'm wondering about the possibility of a buyout in this company. It is just so large that there are only a handful of people that can buy this. We saw Intel go after Altera. Uh, and for this, I would say that you want to stand back and fade the first move. If this thing gaps up, it's got a giant, uh, a, a giant triangle pattern coming into this thing with uh, uh, higher lows and lower highs uh, going back into March 13th for the high 
and February 9th for the low. So you continue to see this thing tighten up and wind up. This one could have a, a I'm looking at uh, options on this one, looks like it's kind of thin. So I wouldn't be surprised to see this one have a big surprise, uh, either higher or lower. But uh, they are the last odd man out, uh, not owned by somebody else in this FBGA business, which is uh, kind of like a programmable chip that could be a processor or anything you want. It basically has enough stuff. Anyway, uh, Xilinx and Altera in this business. Altera bought by Intel. Let's take a look at Intel when we come back. Uh, you still have plenty of time to give me a call at 877-927-6048. No matter what kind of trader you are, 2018 is a great time to try out a subscription to Tom O'Brien's Gold Report. Whether you just plan on diversifying your portfolio with some exposure to gold and gold mining equities, or you're a gold bull that sees 2018 as the year of commodities, now is a great time to sign up for the Gold Report. Tom O'Brien publishes his Gold Report every Monday morning before the market opens and covers a variety of topics including gold, silver, platinum, copper, the XAU and HUI, the dollar, bonds, South African Rand, as well as more than 20 of the most actively traded mining equities. Start your 2018 off with a bang and sign up for The Gold Report today. The Gold Report is a long-term newsletter where the focus is on building real wealth through the management of a successful portfolio of gold stocks. For all the details and to start your subscription right now, visit the front page of TFNN.com and you'll find The Gold Report under Investment Newsletters. David White's newsletter, The Technology Insider, is focused like a laser on finding the next big things in technology. If you had invested only $10,000 in Microsoft in 1986, you'd have been a millionaire by 2000. Disruptive technology like Microsoft's is the key to these massive long-term profits, and The Tech Insider is the vehicle from TFNN to capitalize on these opportunities. This is the go-to newsletter that identifies, monitors, and profits on mostly little-known cutting-edge companies with great long long term prospects. David's experience is as an inventor of Emmy winning animation products for TV and Hollywood that propelled a company public. Match that with 14 years as a full time trader, and he's uniquely qualified to guide you through the light speed world of ever evolving high tech. If you're ready to ride the next big technology bull market for less than $40 per month, log on to TFNN.com and get your two week free trial to the Technology Insider. Get in on the ground floor of the next big thing today. I'm certain you are or strive to be one of the best of the best at everything you do in life. It's the most common trait that we tigers and tigresses share. If you're looking to become the best of the best when it comes to managing your money, let me teach you to do what most wealth managers tell you can't be done, which is how to time the markets. I'm Steve Rhodes, author of Mastering Probability, and for the last 12 months, Timer Digest has been tracking my newsletter signals, which have earned me the ranking as their number one market timer in the nation for the S&P 500 for the last 12, 6, and 3 months. Timer Digest also ranks me as the number one market timer for gold as well. The fact is, markets can be timed, and I'll teach you the exact set of tools that I use that has transformed me into one of the best at what I do. Sign up for Mastering Probability today by clicking on the newsletter tab on the homepage of TFNN.com and get immediate access to workshops where I take you step-by-step -step how to use an extraordinary set of tools as well as provide great market calls too. Sign up today. Catch Tom O'Brien, professional trader and educator, founder of TFNN, also a special guest on CNBC. Tom will bisect and dissect the markets. The Tom O'Brien Show, next on TFNN. And Tom O'Brien will follow me for the next two hours on most of TFNN. In fact, all of of TFNN. Uh, and of course, uh, at four o'clock, he'll be going through the earnings and it will be uh, packed tonight. Facebook, Advanced Micro Devices, Visa, PayPal, Gilead Sciences, Qualcomm, Align Technologies, Las Vegas Sands, Barrick Gold, Mattel, Xilinx, F5 Network, Sleep Number Corporation, Mondelez, Eyes, uh, IMAX, uh, O'Reilly Automotive, Miko, the uh, uranium company, 
Man, I haven't looked at that one in a while. Let's take a quick look. Uh, Citric Systems, Dolby, um, Gold Corp, Raymond James, uh, U Universal Health Services, UHS, Mohawk Industries. That may get a, a little bit of, of a read on uh, housing. Because, of course, uh, when you build a new house, you got to throw some carpet in there. Core Laboratories, Equifax, uh, Cabot Microelectronics, Ethan Allen Furnitures. And again, that's going to give you a good read because as soon as people buy houses, they stuff them full of furniture. Uh, Coeur d'Alene uh, Mine, CDE, CoreLogic. Man, there's just a ton of stuff. And then, of course, uh, we go right into that tomorrow morning with McDonald's, MasterCard, Cell Jeans. Uh, Under Armour, Raytheon, Leska Air Group, uh, t -t 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 American Airlines, Nokia, Altria, McKesson, Bristol Myers, uh, AstraZeneca, uh, Anheuser Busch, Conoco Phillips, Valero. So we're going to get a lot of energy in that tomorrow. We've got more housing news in the morning. We've got Pulte Group uh, with D H Horton, uh, t -t 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 Tower Semiconductor, Duncan Brands, uh, and then of course. We take a big gap or uh, breath only to get into Amazon after the bell on Thursday, along with Intel, LAM, Researches, Electronic Arts, Western Digital, Starbucks, Ulti, Expedia. Man, it's just not going to, you're going to have a busy, busy two days. Make sure you get your sleep. In the meantime, sell when you can, not when you have to. We will be back here same fat channel, same fat time. TFNN has put together the finest programming lineup each trading day, featuring some of the most knowledgeable and respected financial minds in the nation to educate traders and investors. On Mondays, Wednesdays, and Fridays, we broadcast eight hours a day, starting at 9 a.m. as Larry Pesavento kicks us off with Trade What You See. Tuesdays and Thursdays, we broadcast 11 hours. Get an early and healthy start to your day as Nico and Paige bring you Living a Primal Lifestyle. Then catch Andy Hecht at 5 p.m. with the Commodities Hour, following the Tom O'Brien Show. Swim Lessons from TD Ameritrade, Think or Swim, is now at 11 a.m., followed by Basil Chapman at 12 noon. See the TFNN program lineup via the link on the front page of TFNN.com to get a complete overview of our TFNN shows and hosts. And keep TFNN's Tiger TV tuned in on your mobile device, PC, or Mac for the latest financial news and information throughout the broadcasting day. TFNN.com, educating investors. No matter what.